The Albanian National Awakening Albanian, Kombater, commonly known as the Albanian Renaissance or National Renaissance or National Revival, refers to a social, cultural and political movement in the history of Albania from the 19th century until the Declaration of Independence in 1912 that advocated the revival of Albanian culture, language, customs, and the creation of the country of Albania. The activists are called revivalists Albanian, Relindas. There is some debate among experts regarding when the Albanian nationalist movement should be considered to have started. Some sources attribute its origins to the revolts against centralization in the 1830s, others to the publication of the first attempt by Nam Vecil Harji at a standardized alphabet for Albanian in 1844, or to the collapse of the League of Prisren during the Eastern Crisis in 1881. Various compromise positions between these three theses have also emerged, such as one view positing that Albanian nationalism had foundations that dated earlier but consolidated as a movement during the Eastern Crisis 1878-1881. Another view is that Albanian nationalism's roots sprouted in the reforms of the first decades of the 19th century but Albanian nationalism emerged properly in the 1830s and 1840s as a romantic movement for societal reform that was initially mainly driven by Albanians publishing from abroad, and it transformed into an overt political national movement in the 1870s. On December 20, 1912, the Conference of Ambassadors in London recognised an independent Albania within its present-day borders. Background Topic: 1831–1878 After the fall of the Yanina Pashalik, the power and influence of the Albanian bays had faded. The remaining bays thus attempted to restore their rule. An assembly was held in Barat in 1828. In this convention, the leaders were Ismail Bey Kemali, Xyliftar Poda and Shahin Bej Delvina. The Ottoman Empire tried to prevent the rise of local bays, which presented a menace to centralized power. In 1830, the Sublime Port sent an expeditionary force under the command of Razid Mehmed Pasha to suppress the local Albanian bays. On hearing the news of the Ottoman Fosse's arrival, the three most powerful local chiefs, Xyliftar Poda, accompanied by the remains of Ali Pasha's faction, Veli Bey whose power base was around Yanina, and Arslan Bey, along with other less powerful bays, began to prepare their forces to resist a probable Ottoman attack. Realizing the seriousness of the situation and the danger of a general uprising, Razid Mehmed Pasha invited the Albanian bays to a meeting on the pretext that they would be rewarded for their loyalty to the port. The bays however, were all killed along with their guards, the last Albanian Pashalik to fall was the Skatari Pashalik. The Bushati dynasty rule ended when an Ottoman army under Mehmed Reshid Pasha besieged the Rozafa castle and forced Mustafa Reshiti to surrender 1831. The Albanian defeat ended a planned alliance between the Albanian bays and the Bosnian nobility, who were similarly seeking autonomy. Instead of the Pashalik, the Vilayes of Skatari and that of Kosovo were created. Early revolts By removing the Timar system, the Sublime Port intended to strengthen its central government and reclaim the power of the empire, which had been severely weakened due to economic and social backwardness, from the exploitative system and from the ongoing uprisings of peoples. Reforms began to be implemented in Albania since the 1830s. They gave a blow to the ranks of the old military feudal class which had been weakened from Ottoman expeditions from 1822 to 1831. Parts of the feudal heads that had launched revolts were eliminated, others were exiled and those who could, had escaped from the country. All their properties were declared state-owned. This gave rise to new landowners who had connections to the sublime port. Due to the Ottoman occupation, the ideology of nationalism developed difficultly and were limited in Albanian inhabited territories in the Balkan. They found more favorable development conditions outside, in the capital of the empire, Istanbul, Italy, other Balkan countries etc. The national ideas became apparent via popular uprisings against the Tanzimat reforms, but they still did not reach a period to be formulated in full policy of the national movement. 
They were more expressed with literary works and studies of the Albanian people, history, language, and culture. In their writings, the Rielandas fought to invoke feelings of love for the country by exalting patriotic traditions and episodes of history, especially that of the Skanderbeg era and folk culture. They devoted a lot of attention to native language and Albanian schools as a means to affirm individuality and national vindication. The centralizing reforms of the Ottoman government were implemented immediately with the deployment of civil and military personnel in Albania. This was met with resistance by the local population which first began with the refusal to execute orders and quickly transformed into armed rebellion. After two local uprisings that burst in the beginning of 1833 in Kolonje and in Diber were repressed, uprisings occurred in Barat Vlor Delvine Camaria area in larger scales than before. The actions of the Ottoman army were driven by terror and increased unhappiness in the local population, who were aptly anticipated to revolt again. Fugitive agitators circulated across the provinces to organize further rebellions, calling on the people to prepare for war. Others were sent to neighboring provinces to secure their presence by pointing out they are brothers to get ahead of the danger of the new outbreak of popular hate. At the beginning of 1844, the Ottoman authorities urged urgent action. They concentrated large military forces at various points, especially in Bitola, where the state was worse. By the end of March 1844, the new uprising erupted but was suppressed. In the ensuing years there were bursts of armed insurrections throughout Albania against the Ottoman centralizing reforms, and especially against the burden of the new taxes imposed and against the obligatory military service. But, at the same time and within the bosom of these insurrections, preliminary national claims started to spread. These claims came forth especially in the revolt of 1847, which assumed great proportions in two zones of southern Albania, in the Jirakastra region led by Zenil Jaleka and in that of Barat led by Rapo Hekali. History Formation. There is some debate among experts regarding when the Albanian nationalist movement should be considered to have started. Some sources attribute its origins to the revolts against centralization in the 1830s, others to the publication of the first attempt by Nam Vecil Harji at a standardized alphabet for Albanian in 1844, or to the collapse of the League of Prisren during the Eastern Crisis in 1881. Various compromise positions between these three theses have also emerged, such as one view positing that Albanian nationalism had foundations that dated earlier but consolidated as a movement during the Eastern Crisis 1878-1881. Another view is that Albanian nationalism's roots sprouted in the reforms of the first decades of the 19th century but Albanian nationalism emerged properly in the 1830s and 1840s as a romantic movement for societal reform that was initially mainly driven by Albanians publishing from abroad, and it transformed into an overt political national movement in the 1870s. According to the view that the Rilindia evolved in the 1870s, because of religious ties of the Albanian majority of the population with the ruling Ottomans and the lack of an Albanian state in past, nationalism was less developed and the national movement was greatly delayed among Albanians in the 19th century compared to neighboring Southeast European nations, such as the Greeks, Serbs, Bulgarians and Romanians. The Rilindia was a continuation of the Albanian revolts and cultural activities for independence that took place during the entire Ottoman period. The centralist Tanzimat reforms, which were aimed at replacing local Albanian functionaries and suppression of Albanian culture sowed the seeds of the Rilindia. In that period an intellectual and merchant class with the new ideas that were emerging in Europe was shaped, empowering the existing struggle against the Ottoman rule. Political nationalism and economic liberalism were two modern platforms that inspired many Albanian intellectuals. The French Revolution left a socio-economic impact on the Albanian society, with many Albanian intellectuals highlighting ideals of the revolution and important figures such as Voltaire and Jean-Jacques Rousseau. During that time, the destruction of the Pashalik of Yanina and the growing Greek nationalist ambitions fueled reaction of Albanian intellectual elite. The son of one merchant family, Nam Vecil Harji, started his work to write an alphabet intended to help Albanians overcome religious and political issues in 1824 or 1825. 
Vechil Harji thought that the continuous occupations had caused many problems to Albanian education. His work facilitated the diffusion of national awareness based on the unity of kin, identity of language and traditions. Some Albanian patriots, among them many from the Arboreche communities in Italy, built contacts with Italian democratic and revolutionary forces. This helped the Rilindia movement to expand beyond the frame of Albanian-Ottoman relations, and become an international issue. The Risorgimento actually served as an inspiration for the movement. The 1877–1878 Russo-Turkish War dealt a decisive blow to Ottoman power in the Balkan Peninsula. The Albanians fear that the lands they inhabited would be partitioned among Montenegro, Serbia, Bulgaria, and Greece fueled the rise of the Albanian national movement. The first post-war treaty, the abortive Treaty of San Stefano signed on March 3, 1878, assigned Albanian populated lands to Serbia, Montenegro, and Bulgaria. Austria-Hungary and the United Kingdom blocked the arrangement because it awarded Russia a predominant position in the Balkans and thereby upset the European balance of power. A peace conference to settle the dispute was held later in the year in Berlin. The Treaty of San Stefano triggered profound anxiety among the Albanians meanwhile, and it spurred their leaders to organize a defense of the lands they inhabited. In the spring of 1878, influential Albanians in Constantinople, including Abdel Frasheri, one of the first political ideologues of the National Revival organized a secret committee to direct the Albanians' resistance. In May the group called for a general meeting of representatives from all the Albanian populated lands. On June 10, 1878, about 80 delegates, mostly Muslim religious leaders, clan chiefs, and other influential people from the four Albanian populated Ottoman vilayets, met in Prisren. The delegates declared the formation of the League of Prisren which consisted of two branches, the Prisren branch and the Southern branch. The Prisren branch was led by Ilyas Dibra and it had representatives from the areas of Kerkova Kasivo, Kalkandalan Titovo, Pristine Pristina, Mitrovica Kosovska Mitrovica, Visidiran Vusidern, Uskup Skopje, Gilan Gengelain, Manistir Bitola, Dabar Dabar and Gostovar. The southern branch, led by Abdel Frasheri consisted of 16 representatives from the areas of Kolonje, Kors, Arda, Barat, Parga, Jiracaster, Perme, Paramithia, Filiates, Margariti, Vlor, Tepelin and Delvine. The League of Prisren was set under the direction of a central committee that had the power to impose taxes and raise an army. The League of Prisren worked to gain autonomy for the Albanians and to thwart implementation of the Treaty of San Stefano, but not to create an independent Albania. The participants wanted to return to the status quo before the start of Russo-Turkish War of 1877-1878. The main aim was to defend from immediate dangers. Among other things the League requested an official status for the Albanian language in the Albanian inhabited territories and the foundation of Albanian schools. At first the Ottoman authorities supported the League of Prisren, but the Sublime Port pressed the delegates to declare themselves to be first and foremost Ottomans rather than Albanians. Some delegates supported this position and advocated emphasizing Muslim solidarity and the defense of Muslim lands, including present-day Bosnia and Herzegovina. Other representatives, under Frasheri's leadership, focused on working toward Albanian autonomy and creating a sense of Albanian identity that would cut across religious and tribal lines. Because conservative Muslims constituted a majority of the representatives, the League of Prisren supported maintenance of Ottoman suzerainty. In July 1878, the League sent a memorandum to the Great Powers at the Congress of Berlin, which was called to settle the unresolved problems of Turkish war, demanding that all Albanians be united in a single autonomous Ottoman province. The Congress of Berlin ignored the League's memorandum. The Congress ceded to Montenegro the cities of Bar and Podgorica and areas around the mountain towns of Gusing and Plav, which Albanian leaders considered Albanian territory. Serbia also gained some Albanian inhabited lands. The Albanians, the vast majority loyal to the empire, vehemently opposed the territorial losses. Albanians also feared the possible loss of Epirus to Greece. The League of Prisren organized armed resistance efforts in Gusing, Plav, Skatari, Prisren, Preveza, and Yanina. A border tribesman at the time described the frontier as floating on blood. In August 1878, the Congress of Berlin ordered a commission to trace a border between the Ottoman Empire and Montenegro. The Congress also directed Greece and the Ottoman Empire to negotiate a solution to their border dispute. 
The great powers expected the Ottomans to ensure that the Albanians would respect the new borders, ignoring that the Sultan's military forces were too weak to enforce any settlement and that the Ottomans could only benefit by the Albanians' resistance. The Sublime Port, in fact, armed the Albanians and allowed them to levy taxes, and when the Ottoman army withdrew from areas awarded to Montenegro under the Treaty of Berlin, Roman Catholic Albanian tribesmen simply took control. The Albanians' successful resistance to the treaty forced the great powers to alter the border, returning Gusing and Plav to the Ottoman Empire and granting Montenegro the Albanian populated coastal town of Ulcin. There the Albanians refused to surrender as well. Finally, the great powers blockaded Ulcin by sea and pressured the Ottoman authorities to bring the Albanians under control. The great powers decided in 1881 to cede Greece only Thessaly and the district of Arda. Faced with growing international pressure to pacify the refractory Albanians, the Sultan dispatched a large army under Dervish Turgut Pasha to suppress the League of Prisren and deliver Ulcin to Montenegro. Albanians loyal to the empire supported the Sublime Port's military intervention. In April 1881, Dervish Pasha's 10,000 men captured Prisren and later crushed the resistance at Ulcin. The League of Prisren's leaders and their families were arrested and deported. Frasheri, who originally received a death sentence, was imprisoned until 1885 and exiled until his death seven years later. In the three years it survived, the League of Prisren effectively made the great powers aware of the Albanian people and their national interests. Montenegro and Greece received much less Albanian populated territory than they would have won without the League's resistance. Formidable barriers frustrated Albanian leaders' efforts to instill in their people an Albanian rather than an Ottoman identity. Divided into four villages, Albanians had no common geographical or political nerve center. The Albanians' religious differences forced nationalist leaders to give the national movement a purely secular character that alienated religious leaders. The most significant factor uniting the Albanians, their spoken language, lacked a standard literary form and even a standard alphabet. Each of the three available choices, the Latin, Cyrillic, and Arabic scripts, implied different political and religious orientations opposed by one or another element of the population. In 1878 there were no Albanian language schools in the most developed of the Albanian inhabited areas and the choice for education was between Orthodox church schools, where education was in Greek and Ottoman government schools where education was in Turkish. The Ottoman Empire continued to crumble after the Congress of Berlin and Sultan Abdul Hamid II resorted to repression to maintain order. The authorities strove without success to control the political situation in the empire's Albanian populated lands, arresting suspected nationalist activists. When the Sultan refused Albanian demands for unification of the four Albanian populated vilayets, Albanian leaders reorganized the League of Prisren and incited uprisings that brought the Albanian populated lands, especially Kosovo, to near anarchy. The imperial authorities disbanded a successor organization Besa Bis League of Pesia founded in 1897, executed its president Haji Zeka in 1902, and banned Albanian language books and correspondence. In Macedonia, where Bulgarian, Greek, and Serbian-backed guerrillas were fighting Ottoman authorities and one another for control, Muslim Albanians suffered attacks, and Albanian guerrilla groups retaliated. Albanian leaders meeting in Bitola during 1905 established the Secret Committee for the Liberation of Albania. In 1905, priest Christo Negovani who had attained Albanian national sentiments abroad returned to his native village of Negovan and introduced the Albanian language for the first time in Orthodox liturgy. For his efforts Negovani was killed by a Greek guerrilla band on orders from Bishop Caravangelis of Castoria that aroused a nationalist response with the Albanian guerrilla band of Bajo Tapuli killing the Metropolitan of course, Fotios. In 1906 opposition groups in the Ottoman Empire emerged, one of which evolved into the Committee of Union and Progress, more commonly known as the Young Turks, which proposed restoring constitutional government in Constantinople, by revolution if necessary. In July 1908, a month after a Young Turk rebellion in Macedonia supported by an Albanian uprising in Kosovo and Macedonia escalated into widespread insurrection and mutiny within the Imperial Army, Sultan Abdul Hamid II agreed to demands by the Young Turks to restore constitutional rule. Many Albanians participated in the Young Turks uprising, hoping that it would gain their people autonomy within the empire. The Young Turks lifted the Ottoman ban on Albanian language schools and on writing the Albanian language. 
As a consequence, Albanian intellectuals meeting in Bitola in 1908 chose the Latin alphabet as a standard script. The Young Turks, however, were set on maintaining the empire and not interested in making concessions to the myriad nationalist groups within its borders. After securing the abdication of Abdul Hamid II in April 1909, the new authorities levied taxes, outlawed guerrilla groups and nationalist societies, and attempted to extend Constantinople's control over the northern Albanian mountain men. In addition, the Young Turks legalized the bastinado, or beating with a stick, even for misdemeanors, banned carrying rifles, and denied the existence of an Albanian nationality. The new government also appealed for Islamic solidarity to break the Albanians' unity and use the Muslim clergy to try to impose the Arabic alphabet. The Albanians refused to submit to the Young Turks' campaign to Ottomanize them by force. New Albanian uprisings began in Kosovo and the northern mountains in early April 1910. Ottoman forces quashed these rebellions after three months, outlawed Albanian organizations, disarmed entire regions, and closed down schools and publications. Montenegro held ambitions of future expansion into neighboring Albanian populated lands and supported a 1911 uprising by the mountain tribes against the Young Turks regime that grew into a widespread revolt. Unable to control the Albanians by force, the Ottoman government granted concessions on schools, military recruitment, and taxation and sanctioned the use of the Latin script for the Albanian language. The government refused, however, to unite the four Albanian inhabited vilayets. Topic. Revolts of 1910 and 1911 In 1910, due to the new centralization policies of the young Turk Ottoman government towards Albanians, local Albanian leaders Isa Boltini and Idris Seferi started an uprising against the Ottomans in the Kosovo Vilayet. After subduing the Ottoman garrisons in towns such as Pristina and Farazaj, the Ottoman government declared martial law and sent a military expedition of 16,000 men led by Shevket Turgut Pasha. Simultaneously, forces under Idris Seferi captured the Kakanic Pass. They successfully defended the pass from the Ottoman expeditionary force thus, forcing them to send a force of 40,000 men. After two weeks the pass was lost to the Ottomans after fierce fighting, the rebels retreated to Drenica and the Ottomans seized control of Prisren, Jakova and Pesia afterwards Ottoman forces incurred into northern Albania and Macedonia. Ottoman forces were stopped for more than 20 days in the Agri Pass, from the Albanian forces of Shale, Shosh, Nakai and Murtor areas, led by Prel Tuli, Mehmet Shpendi, and Marish Delia. Unable to repress their resistance, this column took another way to Skatari, passing from the Puke region. On July 24, 1910, Ottoman forces entered the city of Skatari. During this period martial courts were put in action and summary executions took place. A large number of firearms were collected and many villages and properties were burned by the Ottoman army. In 1911, the Albanian National Committee was formed. In a meeting of the committee held in Podgorica from 2 to 4 February 1911, under the leadership of Nikola Bey Ivanaj and Sokol Basi Ivazai, it was decided to organize an Albanian uprising. Terenzio Tochi gathered the Murdite chieftains on 26 27 April 1911 in Orish, proclaimed the independence of Albania, raised the flag of Albania, according to Robert Elsie, it was raised for the first time after Skanderbeg's death, and established the provisional government. Sheke Turgut Pasha wanted to meet this threat and returned to the region with 8.000 soldiers. As soon as he reached Shkoder on of May, he issued a general proclamation which declared martial law and offered an amnesty for all rebels except for Malesser chieftains if they immediately returned to their homes. After Ottoman troops entered the area Tochi fled the empire abandoning his activities. After months of intense fighting, the rebels were trapped and decided to escape to Montenegro. On 23 June 1911, in the village of Gerche, in Montenegro, an assembly of the tribal leaders of the revolt was held to adopt the Greece Memorandum. This memorandum was signed by 22 Albanian chieftains, four from each tribe of Hoti, Grud and Skrel, five from Kastrati, three from Clemendi and two from Shale. Requests of the memorandum included General amnesty for all participants in the revolt Demand for recognition of the Albanian ethnicity Election of the deputies of Albanian ethnicity for the Ottoman parliament according to the proportional system Albanian language in schools 
Governor and other appointed high officials have to know Albanian language and all other positions in the administration have to be reserved only for people of Albanian ethnicity. Men who are ethnic Albanians to serve army only in Albania during the peacetime. Confiscated arms to be returned. All Albanian property damaged by Ottoman troops to be compensated. The memorandum was submitted to the representatives of great powers in Setinje, Montenegro. Ottoman representatives managed to deal with the leaders of Albanian rebels in Kosovo Vilayet and Skatari Vilayet separately, because they were not united and lacked central control. The Ottomans promised to meet most Albanian demands, limited mainly to Catholic Highlanders like General Amnesty, the opening of Albanian language schools, and the restriction that military service was to be performed only in the territory of the Vilayets with substantial Albanian population. Other demands included requiring administrative officers to learn the Albanian language, and that the possession of weapons would be permitted. Revolts of 1912 The Albanian Revolt of 1912 was one of many Albanian revolts in the Ottoman Empire and lasted from January until August 1912. Albanian soldiers and officers deserted the Ottoman military service and joined the insurgents. After a series of successes, Albanian revolutionaries managed to capture the city of Skopje, the administrative center of Kosovo Vilayet within the Ottoman rule. On August 9, 1912, Albanian rebels presented a new list of demands, the so called List of 14 Points, related to the Albanian Vilayet, that can be summarized as follows. Autonomous system of administration and justice of four vilayets populated with Albanians. Albanian Vilayet. Albanians to perform military service only in territory of four vilayets populated with Albanians, except in time of war. Employing officials who know local language and customs, but not necessarily Albanians. Establishment of new lices and agricultural schools in the bigger districts. Reorganization and modernization of the religious schools and use of Albanian language in secular schools. Freedom to establish private schools and societies. The development of trade, agriculture and public works General amnesty for all Albanians involved in revolt Court martial for those Ottoman officers who attempted to suppress the revolt The revolt ended when the Ottoman government agreed to fulfill the rebels' demands, except of the last one, on September 4, 1912. The autonomous system of administration and justice of the four vilayets with a substantial Albanian population was accepted by the Ottoman Empire, however they avoided granting autonomy to a unitary Albanian vilayet which was part of the Albanian National Awakening Agenda during the League of Prisren. Independence The First Balkan War, however, erupted before a final settlement could be worked out. The Balkan allies—Serbia, Bulgaria, Montenegro and Greece—quickly drove the Ottomans to the walls of Constantinople. The Montenegrins surrounded Skatari. An assembly of Muslim and Christian leaders meeting in Vlor in November 1912 declared Albania an independent country. The complete text of the declaration was in Vlora, on 15, 28 November. That time the president was Ismail Kemal Bey, in which he spoke of the great perils facing Albania today. The delegates have all decided unanimously that Albania, as of today, should be on her own, free and independent. A second session of the Assembly of Vlor was held on December 4, 1912. During that session members of the Assembly established the Provisional Government of Albania. It was a government that consisted of ten members, led by Ismail Kemali until his resignation on the 22nd of January 1914. The Assembly established the Senate Albanian, Plekhezi, with an advisory role to the government, consisting of 18 members of the Assembly. An ambassadorial conference that opened in London in December decided the major questions concerning the Albanians after the First Balkan War in its concluding Treaty of London of May 1913. The Albanian delegation in London was assisted by Aubrey Herbert, MP, a passionate advocate of their cause. One of Serbia's primary war aims was to gain an Adriatic port, preferably Duras. Austria-Hungary and Italy opposed giving Serbia an outlet to the Adriatic, which they feared would become a Russian port. They instead supported the creation of an autonomous Albania. Russia backed Serbia's and Montenegro's claims to Albanian inhabited lands. 
Britain and Germany remained neutral. Chaired by Britain's Foreign Secretary, Sir Edward Grey, the Ambassadors' Conference initially decided to create an autonomous Albania under continued Ottoman rule, but with the protection of the Great Powers. This solution, as detailed in the Treaty of London, was abandoned in the summer of 1913 when it became obvious that the Ottoman Empire would, in the Second Balkan War, lose Macedonia and hence its overland connection with the Albanian inhabited lands. In July 1913, the Great Powers opted to recognize an independent, neutral Albanian state ruled by a constitutional monarchy and under the protection of the Great Powers. The August 1913 Treaty of Bucharest established that independent Albania was a country with borders that gave the new state about 28,000 square kilometres of territory and a population of 800,000. Montenegro had to surrender Skatari after having lost 10,000 men in the process of taking the town. Serbia reluctantly succumbed to an ultimatum from Austria-Hungary, Germany, and Italy to withdraw from northern Albania. The treaty, however, left large areas with majority Albanian populations, notably Kosovo and Western Macedonia, outside the new state and failed to solve the region's nationality problems. Culture Arts In traditional modern Albanian art history, the Albanian Renaissance is connected directly with the painter Kol Idromino. <inaudible> <inaudible> Literature Albanian intellectuals in the late 19th century began devising a single, standard Albanian literary language and making demands that it be used in schools. In Constantinople in 1879, Sami Frasheri founded a cultural and educational organization, the Society for the Printing of Albanian Writings, whose membership comprised Muslim, Catholic, and Orthodox Albanians. Naim Frasheri, the most renowned Albanian poet, joined the society and wrote and edited textbooks. Albanian émigrés in Bulgaria, Egypt, Italy, Romania, and the United States supported the society's work. The Greeks, who dominated the education of Orthodox Albanians, joined the Turks in suppressing the Albanians' culture, especially Albanian language education. In 1886 the Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople threatened to excommunicate anyone found reading or writing Albanian, and priests taught that God would not understand prayers uttered in Albanian. In 1844–5 however, Albanian intellectual Nam Vecil Harji published his work Evitori Shkip Fort i Shkurter English, the short Albanian Evitor which was an alphabet that included 33 letters which were invented by himself. He avoided the use of Latin, Greek or Arabic alphabets and characters because of their religious associations and divisions. In November 1869, a commission for the alphabet of the Albanian language was gathered in Istanbul. One of its members was Kostandin Christoforidi and the main purpose of the commission was the creation of a unique alphabet for all the Albanians. In January 1870 the commission ended its work of the standardization of the alphabet, which was mainly in Latin letters. A plan on the creation of textbooks and spread of Albanian schools was drafted. However this plan was not realized, because the Ottoman government wouldn't finance the expenses for the establishment of such schools. Although this commission had gathered and delivered an alphabet in 1870, the writers from the north still used the Latin-based alphabet, whereas in southern Albania writers used mostly the Greek letters. The turning point was the aftermath of the League of Prisren events when in 1879 Sami Frasheri and Naim Frasheri formed the Society for the Publication of Albanian Writings. Members of the society Sami Frasheri, Naim Frasheri and Yanni Vreto published the primer of the Albanian language and other works in Albanian that dealt with the humanities, natural sciences and so on. After a long time struggling with obstacles coming from the Ottoman authorities, the first secular school of Albanian language was opened on the initiative of individual teachers and other intellectuals on 7 March 1887 in course. Diamanti Turpo, a citizen of the city, offered her house to serve as a school building. The first director and teacher of the school was Pandeli Sotiri. One year earlier, the Albanian dictionary by Kostandin Christoforidi had been published in 1904. The dictionary had been drafted 25 years before its publication and was written in the Greek alphabet. 
In 1908, the Congress of Monastir was held by Albanian intellectuals in Bitola, modern-day Republic of Macedonia. The Congress was hosted by the Bashkimi Unity Club, and prominent delegates included Gjergj Fishta, Ndremjeda, Midhat Frasheri, Sotir Pechi, Shahin Kolonia, and Gjergj D. Kariazi. There was much debate and the contending alphabets were Istanbul, Bashkimi and Agimi. However, the Congress was unable to make a clear decision and opted for a compromise solution of using both the widely used Istanbul, with minor changes, and a modified version of the Bashkimi alphabet. Usage of the alphabet of Istanbul declined rapidly and it was essentially extinct over the following decades. The Bashkimi alphabet is at the origin of the official alphabet of the Albanian language in use today. A major role during the Albanian national awakening was played by literature, which served to many Rilandas as a way to express their ideas. It was imbued with the spirit of national liberation, with the nostalgia of the emigre and the rhetorical pathos of past heroic wars. This literary school developed the poetry most. Regarding the motifs and poetical forms, its hero was the ethical man, the fighting Albanian, and to a lesser degree the tragic man. Because its major purpose was to awaken national consciousness it was closely linked with the folklore tradition. See also History of Albania Albanian nationalism Albanophobia Dissolution of the Ottoman Empire